We're here at the ID TechX show, so who are you? So my name is Heidi Dose, and I am a senior program manager at Google for the Google Cloud Platform products. So uh, you had a, a keynote just before you were speaking, and what are we talking about? So at my keynote, I was speaking about the Internet of Me, data empowering patients. And in my talk, I basically cover my personal life story as a professional heart patient and what I've learned in the power of data and how it's given me my life back to go back to being a competitive athlete. So uh, hospitals all over the world and, and like governments that control those hospitals and stuff, it seems they, they could be moving much faster in like using technology, right? Yes. Uh, it was interesting. I, I participated in a program at Harvard Medical School this last year, and it gave me an opportunity to immerse myself in the healthcare ecosystem. And it turns out that hospitals are really far behind in technology adoption. Um, a lot of it has to do with the hospitals don't like to take on risk, and every time you make a change, there's a potential for risk. So it doesn't move very quickly, but it also means that we're not embracing the innovation that's possible. Isn't that like, kind of like weird? They're supposed to save lives, right? But there shouldn't be like a huge priority to like do as much as possible to use any chance there is to make, to save, uh, I mean, to, to improve the uh, health of everybody, right? You, you would think so. And I think they have the best interest. They're just so big that they don't change quickly. So this is where I'm, I'm excited about where we are today with all of these startups and the innovation in the wearable technologies and this idea that if you empower the patient with data, the patient then can be more accountable for their healthcare and they can then push for innovation. They can bring their own data to the table and then that makes the healthcare system change. And it also means that they're being able to personally determine if they're beginning to become unhealthy. So let's say in Europe, most countries, I guess, have uh, free healthcare, right? I mean, uh, it's part of the taxes and stuff. So I guess Europeans shouldn't care much about their privacy in that because there's not going to be a company coming to say that you're not going to be covered by the insurance or something, right? So uh, should people not care about so much? I mean, try to get the benefits out of right. instead of uh, delaying everything because they're worried about sharing data or something? Yeah. And, and this is a tough one because each individual has their own idea of what's important and what should be private. Um, personally, for myself, because I'm a, a heart patient, I will always be a heart patient and I'm dependent on innovation because I'm on my seventh pacemaker. If this innovation doesn't happen, happen my life, the quality and the length could be impacted. So if I share my data and we can learn from it and then other people can, can take advantage of that, it's a win-win. So I'm less concerned about the privacy of my data because I see the benefit that will come to me. Somebody that's perfectly healthy, they don't understand, they've just heard all the scary stories that if you're, you know, if someone has access to your healthcare data, they'll use it against you and bad things will happen. I kind of figure that most people have something better to do than find my health data. So, uh, can, can you uh, can you confirm that Google is doing a lot to try to change this? So, Google is an enabling platform. So, what we bring to the table is, here's the puzzle pieces. You can assemble these to build solutions that can help change the world. Google themselves isn't going out and collecting the data and building the applications. Um, we're just bringing the power of what data, what Google does best in the services we offer to developers to develop those solutions to really make the magic happen. But sometimes startups don't need so much, right? They just need some kind of, you know, cash or something to get things out, mm -hmm. like a, an amazing new heart, heart monitor or something. Is it coming soon enough, all this stuff? Well, and, and you know, one of the things that, that I, um, in my presentation, my wish list as a patient, for the last 30 years that I've been in the hospital, they've not changed the fact that I have all these wires attached for heart, heart monitoring, and I have this horrible, uncomfortable hospital gown. Why aren't we, there's been no change in that for 30 years, why are we not making a smart fabric gown 
for hospital clothing that's far more comfortable, that doesn't use the wires and still provides the heart rate sensor. I mean, all this amazing technology. So some of that with these startups that have the idea, that have the technology and building the solutions, it's finding the, the you know, healthcare use cases for the adoption so we can get them implemented. Um, and, and I think that's where we're at today, is be, when a lot of the wearables were implemented, it was just the option for the healthcare, you know, legacy healthcare was to just absorb all this data and they were drowning in data, so they didn't want to you know, adopt any of it. Today, with the analytics and, and the tools that you can say, hey, we're going to generate a lot of data from the sensors, but we're going to analyze it and make it useful by just giving you the pieces that, that you can take action on. And that's something that the healthcare system will be more open to. That could really revolutionize stuff. If, uh, the, for example, we have smartphones, mm -hmm. but the apps are missing sometimes for like stuff that could change the world. Right. And we've had smartphones for a while. We've had the internet for a long time. But where is a website that kind of like solves everything? It, and maybe it, that platform, the Google Pl Cloud platform, can help. So Google Cloud, Pl Google Cloud platform could could absolutely be a place for that infrastructure or that that to be built. And we would be looking for those innovators, those partners to to bring that and then build it on our healthcare optimized platform, which would be fantastic. Um, and, and that's where we want to work with the industry to get this to, to build standards so that the data becomes consistent no matter what set of sensors it's coming from, that, that can then be analyzed using all of our tools, but then you know, presented you with use cases that uh, the healthcare industry is is looking for, and that's where we would look for those innovators to build on our platform. So that's what you work on with the Google Cloud platform. Is that your daily job? That, that's my to daily. Convince the engineers to go in that direction, or what do you do? Uh, it's it, yeah. It, there's a lot of um, me saying healthcare is important. Um, so my day job is being an evangelist and an ambassador to bring like what's happening here at this conference, all, all this amazing um, innovation and, and, and bringing it back to Google Cloud Platform and saying healthcare is important, let's support this, let's make sure that we're building um, the, the right set of, of tools that, that these great innovators can assemble to deliver the solutions that change the world. I think everybody in the world should have a heart rate monitor that constantly monitors them on their wrist or something. It should be happening this year, next year. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's so important. Uh, it's not only important for some people, it should be important for everybody, well, right? Young people might have issues too. And, and I, I am absolutely in agreement with that. It's because if you look at how heart disease is, is communicated. The messaging is that, oh, heart disease is something you get because you have a bad lifestyle or you're overweight or you don't get enough exercise or you smoke or you just get old. But guess what? I was born with, with heart issues and nobody found them. Nobody believed me because I didn't have, a, you know, when I was in high school, um, a heart rate monitor that I could go in and say, see, this is where things aren't looking right. So imagine that now today you can give you know high school kids, elementary school kids a, a heart rate monitor they wear on their wrist, and if there is something happening, it's like you know screenings. Um, you can see if they have issues. There's an and if there is an anomaly, you've got a data point. You can go to the doctor. You can say, hey, here's what we saw, and the doctor can then request you know a medical a, a medical test to confirm something but you're not going in trying to get them to believe you in the first place, which was my experience. So which, uh, which heart rate, are you wearing one? I am. So, so which one is that? So this is actually the uh, the Fitbit Blaze. Oh, that's the new one. That's, it is. It's good. It's and an and OLED, it's, so. it's great because, um, you know, it gives me my steps and everything else, but it also gives me my heart rate. And it, it allows me monitors. Uh, it's constantly monitoring my heart rate. It uh, allows me to hit the uh, the exercise button if I'm doing a, a, a type of exercise, and I can capture that. So it's uh, and it also tells time in a, in a nice way. So. Uh, so if you had that when you were a kid, oh, I, it would have been a different life for you. It would have been a completely different life. I, you know, when I went in when I was first uh, experiencing some issues. The doctor said, oh, you're just not getting enough salt in your diet. 
and then it was, oh, your your hormones, because you're 13 years old, are, are making you feel this way. And it wasn't until I was 19 and I went in for a knee procedure, I had my first EKG. Yeah, All right. The exhibition so that's is great. Now closed.